Welcome to the Israel God Dow. Let's praise God, Israel. Follow right there. That's a tough one to follow right there. We have an awesome choir. In Jesus' name. How's everybody doing? Hopefully y'all feeling good after that one. My goodness. Praise God we got the word. In Jesus' name. All right, we're going to go ahead and open up as we always do every Sabbath with the reading of the law. So if everybody will turn to your Bibles into Exodus chapter 20, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. If everybody will turn to Exodus chapter 20, we're going to pick it up at verse 1 and start with a reading of the law. My brother, when you get there, go ahead and read it. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Amen. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. Praise God for that. And we read these commandments every Sabbath day because we understand and believe that they are ordained unto life. Let's go over to Exodus chapter 12. Excuse me, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're already in Exodus. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. We're going to read 13 and 14. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Keep reading. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Not some of your works, not the ones that are just good. But every last one of them, whether they are good or whether they are evil. That's right. You better remember that. That's right. Revelation chapter 22. Let's go to the last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 22. Last book of the Bible. As we always say, surely the commandment should not show up in the last book of the Bible. Surely. Since we don't have to keep them, right? They shouldn't be right here in the last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 22. We're going to pick it up at verse 14, my brother. Read 14 and 15 when you get there. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have rights to the tree of life. Amen. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Keep reading. For without our dogs 
and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Amen. It says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in into the gates into the city. So don't let nobody tell you that the commandments are done away with. Yes, because again, we're reading them here in the beginning of the Bible in Exodus. We read them in the middle of the Bible in Ecclesiastes. And then we read them in the last book of the Bible in Revelation chapter 22. Yes, right. Last book, last chapter. So don't, again, don't let anyone tell you that the commandments are done away with. Because again, we understand that they are ordained unto life. All right? Amen. Amen. Today we're going to bring forth a lesson unto you titled, For they are not all Israel, which are, which are of Israel, salvation for all nations. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, salvation for all nations. My name is Brother Harris. Reading for uh, me today is Brother uh, Sean. And again, Pull out, your, pull out your pen, pull out your notepad, take some good notes, because we're going to leave no table unturned today when dealing with this particular subject, okay? First of all, it is a shame that we have to put together lessons such as this. Why in the world would the Lord create all these different nationalities, shades of people, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, so on and so forth, if nobody but Israel is going to be saved. Why not then just create all Israelites and call it a day? You have to be very small-minded if you believe that physical Israel will be the only nation saved in the end. But we're going to take a look at it, and we're going to make sure we completely dispel any and all that uh, physical Israel is the only nation that's going to be saved. Now, we're mainly going to be going to be dealing with salvation for all nations today, but all Israel is not Israel, and we got to find out what that means. So this lesson is broken down into three parts. First, we're going to look at God is not a respecter of persons. Let's get that up on the screen. There we are. God is not a respecter of persons. Then we're going to look at all Israel shall be saved. All right? In regards to God is not a respecter of persons. We're going to find out today if your nationality, the way your breath smells, or the way your, if your hair swings to the left or right, dictates if you can enter into the kingdom of God or not. We're going to find out today. And again, all Israel shall be saved because this is what some of our Hebrew brothers use to say other nations won't be saved. Well, the lesson entitled is, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, salvation for all nations. So we have to do some investigation there. And then lastly, we're going to look at Jesus, the king over all nations. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Bless his name. That's right. Let's get into some foundation of scripture. Let's go to Titus chapter 1. Because we have to understand that anyone out there saying anything against the word of God, that must, must be stopped. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 1, we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Titus chapter 1, we're going to pick it up at verse 10. We're going to take our time today. We want everybody to take good notes because if anybody's coming to you with this particular subject, we want you to be able to handle it. We want you to be able to deal with it. Titus chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 10. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. He said, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Right. Who is there of the circumcision? That's Israel. That's Israel, right? That's right. Keep reading. Whose mouths must be stopped. Whose mouths must be stopped. Keep reading. Who subvert whole houses. They'll, they'll tear about your whole household with this vain and deceiving talk, mm. this meaningless mess that they teach and out here. Keep reading. Teaching things which they ought not. Teaching things which they ought not. Like only Israel is going to be saved. 
Physical Israel. Finish that. For filthy lucre's sake. What a shame. Mm. We teach this truth out of this book for salvation. None of us, none of the teachers in the Israel of God get paid. We teach this book for salvation. Amen. And we're going to put it all on the table today. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now God is dealing with physical Israel here. But as we read this, let's not forget that our forefathers came out of Egypt with a mixed multitude. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to read one verse, verse 9, when you get there. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to read one verse, verse 9. We're still here a few pages. We're going to take our time. I want everybody to get there. Go ahead and read it, my brother. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. That's right. The faithful God. Uh-huh. Which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. That's right. He said, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God which keepeth covenants and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. That's right. And this goes for all those who love him. Whomever you are. We just setting the foundation. Exodus chapter 12. Flip right on back to Exodus chapter 12. We're just setting the foundation here. He keeps covenants with those who love him. And he shows mercy to those who love him. Amen. Whoever you are. Exodus chapter 12, we're going to read one verse here, verse 49, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 49, go ahead and read it. One law shall be to him that is home born. One law shall be to him that is home born, Israel, keep reading. And unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. The stranger ain't got to keep no law. Huh? They ain't got to keep no law, right? They ain't a part of this thing. They can do whatever they want to do. But we just read right here, one law shall be to him that is homeborn. That's what the book says. Israel, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. That's right. Ain't that simple? You can't get around that, but we're going to keep reading. John chapter 6. We're just setting the foundation. Because if the stranger wasn't a part of this thing, they should be having a free fall right now. <laughs> Doing whatever they want to do. Ain't got no shot. I know I would. John chapter 6. St. John chapter 6. We're just setting the foundation. We're going to pick it up at verse 47. St. John chapter 6. We're going to pick it up at verse 47. Read 47, 48, brother, and we're going to skip. Still here a few pages. All right, let's go ahead and read it. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Surely, surely, I say unto you. Keep reading. He that believeth on me. Hath, he, that, he that believeth on me. Hath everlasting life. Uh-huh. I am the bread of life. Jesus say, I am the bread of life. Skip down to verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. That's right. If any man eat of this bread. Paul. He said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If Israel eat of this bread. If any man. If any man eat of this bread. Keep reading. He shall live forever. He shall live forever. Keep reading. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh. That's right. Which I will give for the life of the world. Which I will give for the life of Israel only. He said the world. He said for the, we read that right. We got to make sure we read, we read that correctly. Let's go over to St. John chapter 3. He said, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. But well, we got to make sure we read it correctly. St. John chapter 3. We're going to pick it up at verse 16. Now, everybody in here that grew up on this scripture. <laughs> everybody in here probably can quote this scripture like the back of their hand. But for some odd reason, when we start picking up this book, we see Israel, 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 
And it becomes all about Israel and everybody else is done. They squash. Any other nation is don't mean a thing. But we just read that the Lord said, I'm going to give my flesh for the life of what, brother? The world. The world, right? Let's make sure we read it correctly, though. Pick it up at verse 16, St. John 3 and 16. Read it. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Uh-huh. That whosoever believeth in him. That whosoever believeth in him. We got to keep pointing those things out. Whosoever believeth in him should not what? Should not perish. That's right. But have everlasting life. 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But what else? But that the world through him might be saved. But that the world through Jesus might be saved. That is right. The world, the whole world, whosoever believeth in him. Now let's go into James chapter 2. We're going to get into this lesson. Let's go into James chapter 2. Y'all understand that foundation that is set so far? Yes, sir. But we're going to look into it. James chapter 2. And we're going to look at God is not a respect of persons. Because he's not. And you can't be either. James chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. James chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read it. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Now, right off the bat, he said, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. You can't do it. Keep reading. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. Keep reading. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. And say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place. And say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. So if you got a brother or sister walk through that door, one of the brother or sister, they come in there with some nice clothes on, they looking all good, got the smell good on, you want to sit them wherever they want to sit at. But then you got a, a person that's, you know, a little less fortunate, they walk through the door, and then our MVS team or whoever else is back there, you're like, hey, you know what, uh, brother or sister, I think you need to sit a little bit somewhere in the back. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, are, are you comfortable enough to sit in the front, or would you prefer to sit in the back? Sit them where they want to be. Sit them in an open seat. Yes. Sit them in an open seat. They deserve the same type of love and respect as you do. Mm. No different, because our God is not a respectable person. He is not. And you can't be up with your nose snooted up talking about just because he don't smell that good. Mm. Point blank. Mm. Where we at, brother? At the bottom of three. Finish. Excuse me, we're at four, actually. Uh, read three again. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there. Or sit here under my footstool. Keep reading. Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? And that's what you're doing. You're becoming judges of evil thoughts. He said, are ye not partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? This type of behavior, that type of thinking is evil. That's right. If the first thing to come to your mind is, oh, man, why did they sit this brother right here? Why did they sit this sister right here knowing she smelled like that, knowing she looked like that? And, uh, and look how I'm, I'm looking. I pay all my tithes here. Don't I deserve to sit on the front row mm. next to pastor? Hmm. Get out of here with all that mess. That's right. That's right. Verse 5, my brother. Yes, sir. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? Amen. And we know how we love the Lord, right? How we love the Lord? Keep Come on now. We got to keep them commandments. That's right. That's how you know you love the Lord. Amen. Skip down to verse 8 and read that. 
If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, uh -huh. thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. You do well if you do that. Keep reading. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. If you got to respect a person, you are committing sin. You are committing sin. I want everybody to understand that. Mm. If you are going against any other nation, you don't like any other nation, you're telling people, brothers and sisters, that they cannot have salvation because they don't look like me and you, hmm. you're committing sin. That's right. You're having respect of persons. But if you have respect of persons, you commit sin, finish that. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. Romans chapter 2. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Look quiet out there. Be like that sometime, though. <laughs> that word cuts. <laughs> Be like that. Romans chapter 2. God is not a respecter of persons. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man. Whosoever thou art that judges. He said, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. Whosoever thou art that judges, keep reading. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. That's all you're doing. You judging other folks? Worry about yourself. Because you're just condemning yourself. Finish that. For thou that judges doest the same thing. And that's exactly what happened. You judging everybody else's walk. Oh, that brother don't do this. Oh, that sister don't do this. When you should be worrying about yourself. That's right. And you turn, you right around the back door doing the same thing they doing. Mm. Get yourself together. What the young folks say, get your life. <laughs> Might be a little old. I don't know. My daughter always be getting on that. Daddy, that was old. <laughs> Verse 2, my brother. Read it. But we are sure. That the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Yes, we are. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to what, brother? Mm, truth. truth. Against them which commit such things. Skip down to verse 5 and read that. But after thy hardness uh -huh. and imp impenitent heart. That's right. Treasure, uh, excuse me, tr treasurous up. Unto thyself wrath against the day that of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. He said, but after thy hardness and thy impotent heart, that none regretful heart, your mind treasureth up unto thyself wrath, mm. that fears anger against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. That's right. Keep reading. Who will, re who will render to every man according to his deeds? Who will render to every man according to his deeds? See, Israel don't want to be a part of that judgment, but we want to be a part of everything else that is good. That's right. We good when we start talking about salvation, mm. but when we talking about judgment, oh, whoa, 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 man. all Israel shall be saved, brother. Mm. Hey, hey, we all going to make it, brother, in hoping of that, right? We're going to find out. If we all going to make it, if all Israel going to be saved, what the book say. So we got to examine it. Right. Verse seven, my brother. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing, that's key, seek for glory and honor, immortality, eternal life. But what? But unto them that are contentious uh -huh. and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, Keep reading. tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. He say tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil unto the Jew first, Israel, and also unto the Gentile. That's right. Keep reading. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, 
to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Keep reading. For there is no respect of persons with God. Ain't no respect of persons with God. Point blank period. If you do what the, do what the Lord say, you're good. You're going to receive a righteous reward. If you are sinning, you're talking, about, uh, talking behind your brother's back, whoever it is, you're going to have a damnation type of judgment. Mm. But see, even the 12 disciples were commanded not to go in the way of the Gentiles at one point. And the Lord had it set up that way because they were not ready yet. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 10. At some point, the Lord told the 12 disciples, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. That's book. We got to read all the book. Yes, we do. We can't leave nothing out. But they just wasn't ready yet, y'all. We're going to find that out. Matthew chapter 10. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Let's look quiet today. That's all right, though. <laughs> it be like that sometimes. Matthew chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples... He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That's right. So the Lord equipped the 12 to take, to take care of the Lord's business. All right. He gave them all power to cast out all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Right. That's right. Skip down to verse five and continue. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, go into the way of the Gentiles. Go not. Excuse me. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. That's right. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Keep read. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. See, the disciples still had some things that they needed to work out, that they needed to work on. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 17. Flip right on over to Matthew 17. Here a certain man came to the disciples to get a devil cast out from among his son. And the, the disciples couldn't cast him out. Matthew 17, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Matthew 17, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. The disciples just wasn't ready yet, y'all. That's all. We're going to find out, though. Everybody there? Sir. Let's read it. Matthew 17 and verse 14. Read it, my brother. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, uh -huh. Lord, have mercy on my son. Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is a lunatic and uh, sore vexed. That's right. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. And what did Jesus say? Keep reading. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. O oh, faithless and perverse generation. Keep reading. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Keep reading. And Jesus rebuked the devil and departed out of him. And the child was cured from the very hour. And that child was cured from that very hour. Keep reading. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Why, 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 why we couldn't cast him out, Lord? You done gave us all power to cast out devils, right. to cure all manner of disease. Why couldn't we cast them out? Keep reading. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Keep reading. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto that, this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Amen. See, their faith needed to be increased, just like we have to continue to increase our faith and grow. That's right. Every day, you got to increase your faith. You have to pray to God to increase your faith so that you can continue to grow. 
when them fiery darts, them, all of the trials and tribulations start coming your way, you got to ask God to increase your faith. Right. If not, you're going to fall back. Mm -hmm. But going back to Jesus telling the disciples, go not in, uh, go not in the way to the, of the Gentiles, because they wasn't ready yet, it was already prophesied that that was going to happen. Isaiah chapter 49. We're just walking this down. Isaiah chapter 49. It was already prophesied that we were going to teach the Gentiles and the other nations. Isaiah 49. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. We still hear a few pages. It was already prophesied that this was going to happen. So we know that they were not ready yet. Isaiah 49, pick it up at verse 1, my brother. Go ahead and read it. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The, uh -huh. the Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother. Hath he made mention of my name? He said, listen, O isles, unto me. And hearken ye people from the far. The Lord hath called me from, uh, from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he mentioned, made mention of my name. This is Jesus talking by the mouth of Isaiah. That is right. Just so everybody uh, knows that, okay? Verse 2, read it. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. That's right. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. Keep reading. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Skip down to verse 5 and read it. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Thou, Israel, be not, excuse me, though Israel be not gathered. Amen. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Keep reading. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. Did y'all read that? He said, he said, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. But what else? I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Keep reading. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the promised land. To the end of the earth. Unto the continent of Africa. To the end of the earth. Unto the continent of America only. The end of the earth. Europe. End of the earth. The end of the earth. Whole That's the whole planet. That's right. Just want to make sure we're reading it right. Yeah. The Bible is straight that up. That thou and down. may be my salvation unto the end of the earth. That's right. Now let's go and see this prophecy being fulfilled in full effect. Let's go over to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. We're going to look at old Cornelius. We're just walking it down. I don't know how my brothers get around earth, world, whomsoever. I don't know how we get around it. Acts chapter 10, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Acts chapter 10, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Remember, y'all, in the beginning when we first started, it said, look, those are the circumcision. They teaching things that they are not. Them mouths must be stopped. So when somebody come to you with this mess, you got to pull out the book and sharp cut them with it. Because they mouth must be stopped. Must be stopped. Acts chapter 10. Pick it up at verse 1, my brother. When you get there, go ahead and read it. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, uh -huh. a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A centurion of the band 
called the Italian band. Now, you know you got brothers out there trying to make Cornelius an Israelite. Yep. It specifically says there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the what? The Italian band. The Italian band. Where is it? Where is where? Where is where do you find Italians at? Italy. In Italy. Last I checked, they was what? <laughs> Gentiles. <laughs> Bro, this stuff is simple. Nah, see, brother, that's a Hebrew. That's a Hebrew, right? <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> Read it one more time, brother, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Verse 2, read it. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, mm -hmm. which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house. Verse 3, read it. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Keep reading. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? What is it, Lord? Keep reading. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. So the Lord heard and accepted this man's prayer that was from another nation? Mm, that's right. He listened to other people from other nations, yes, not does. just Israel. Yes, we just read in two spots, two different chapters, that God is not what? Respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of persons. So guess what? You can't be no respecter of person either. Oh, that's sin. If you want to be Christ-like. That's right. Are you Christ-like? Yes. Are you Satan-like? God forbid. You got to ask yourself that. It ain't no in-between. Either you Christ-like or you Satan-like. That's right. Ask yourself that the next time you see another brother outside of Israel or another sister outside of Israel and you want to get snooty. You want to look at them a little different. You better check yourself. Mm -hmm. Either I'm Christ-like or I'm Satan-like. That's right. Because God ain't no respect of persons. Where we at, brother? We're at five. Read it. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Keep reading. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Amen. Now the Lord had to prepare Peter for this because we just read earlier that Jesus commanded the disciples to go not in the way of the Gentiles. That's right. Right? So even to send this brother Cornelius to Peter. Skip down to verse 9 and read that. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Keep reading. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So Peter then fell into this trance, and the Lord is truly about to prepare him for this new journey that he's about to embark on. Right? That's right. Verse 11, let's read. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. As it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Keep reading. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Keep reading. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And what did Peter say? Because now he's seeing all of these four-footed beasts and all of these creeping things, all these bugs and things that we can't eat, all of these pig feet coming down and everything. He said all this stuff. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Lord, what you trying to show me here? What did he say in verse 14? Read it. But Peter said, not so, Lord. Not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. I ain't never ate nothing common or unclean. Keep reading. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This now, hold on. We got to pause here because a lot of people come here and they try to kill that dietary law. And you should urge them and encourage them to keep reading. <laughs> but we're going to see how Peter reacted to this vision. Let's see if he was jumping up for joy now and has the green light.
to eat some pig. Verse 16, read it. This was done thrice. This was done three times. Keep reading. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Uh huh. Now while Peter doubted in himself that this visit, vision which he, which he had seen should, should mean. Both. Now Peter still doubting. He like, man, ain't no, ain't the Lord giving me no green light eating no pig no, now. Sir. No, he sir. Done, he done saw this vision three times. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had should seen should mean, keep reading. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate uh -huh. and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Keep reading. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Boy, he's still thinking about that vision. Eh? He said, Lord, I know you're not telling me I can eat all this stuff. You know, he commanded me over and over back, back then that we can't eat nothing common or unclean. Oh, you're not giving me that green light. Mm -mm. He's still thinking about it. Verse 20. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting not, excuse me, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Amen. So Peter goes back with him as the Lord commanded, and he meets Cornelius at his house. Skip down to verse 25 and continue. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet. So as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his, and, at his feet and worshipped him. Keep reading. And worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. No, he said, Cornelius, while you down there, kiss my sandal. Man, no. Take my strap off, unbuckle it, and kiss my foot. No, sir. Kiss my boot. That's what he said. He didn't say, stand up, my brother. I am a man just like you are. He said, kiss my sandal. No. That's what he said, right? No, sir. He said, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. Verse 26, read it again. But Peter took him up, saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. Well, you can't tell none of them Hebrew brothers that. Huh? They want everybody else that ain't, that ain't Israel to kiss their boot. Yeah. Read verse 27. Read it. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. He said, and he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew, an Israelite, to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But what has God showed him? Keep finished that, brother. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. God is not a respecter. Of person. That's right. All you got to do is just keep reading. Skip down to verse 34, my brother, and read that. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, What did he say? Of a truth, I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons. Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. But keep reading. But in every nation. But he, in Israel only. But in every nation. But in every nation. He that feareth him, he that feareth him, and worketh righteousness, and worketh righteousness, is accepted with him. Is accepted with him. Amen. Ain't that simple? Amen. That's right. How you get around it? Can't. How you get around every nation? How you get around whosoever? You cannot. We ain't even hit some of the other little small words that I'm ready to hit. <laughs> Let's transition a little bit. Let's go over to Romans chapter 11. Because Paul says something here. Romans chapter 11. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Either you're Christ-like or you're Satan-like. Better remember that. Ain't no in-between. Either you're doing the will of the Father in Jesus' name or you're doing the will of your Father mm. in that other name. Romans chapter 11. We're going to pick it up at verse 25. Romans 
chapter 11. We're going to pick it up at verse 25. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. So, brother, he said, look, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Keep reading. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Uh-huh. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. He say, now blindness in part has happened to Israel until the Gentiles be fulfilled. The fullness of the Gentile be come in. Okay? Verse 26, read it. And so all Israel shall be saved. Uh-oh. Boy, they love reading that. They skip right to that. They don't, they don't read 25. They say, uh-uh, we're going to go to Romans 11 and 26. All, so, and so all Israel shall be saved. Keep reading. As it is written. As it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. Uh-huh. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Keep reading. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. All Israel. So hold your marker right here in Romans, because we're going to uh, come right back. Let's go over to Jeremiah chapter 31. We're going to come back in a, third, uh, in a couple of scriptures here. See, in other lessons, we can show you the full adoption process, but we're going to come right here just to show you that the nation of Israel is the Lord's firstborn. Hold your mark. Jeremiah chapter 31. We're going to pick it up at verse 7. All Israel shall be saved. I got you, brother. Got your sister. But do you? Jeremiah 31. We're going to pick it up at verse 7, and then we're going to skip. Go ahead and read it. For thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. sing with gladness for Jacob. Keep reading. And shout among the chief of the nations. Uh -huh. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Skip down to verse 9 and read it. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, uh -huh. wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. So if Ephraim, which is Israel, is the Lord's firstborn, what does that imply? More children. That there shall be others a part of this foe. If I have a firstborn son, right, my firstborn, that means... I'm planning on having more. Others. Let's go over to St. John chapter 10. Ephraim is my firstborn. Yes, sir. St. John chapter 10. That implies that others will be a part of this foe. St. John chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Then we're going to do some skipping. Still here a couple of pages. Sounds like we're there. Go ahead and read it, my brother. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Surely, surely, I say unto you. Keep reading. He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but you're trying to come some other way, the same is a thief. And a robber. Skip down to verse 7 and read it. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. If you don't come by through Jesus, you're a thief and a robber. Point blank. Skip down to verse 9. Read it. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in. Whoa. By me. We got to pause on these now. If any man enter in. He what? He shall be saved. He shall be what? Saved. We just read all Israel shall be saved, though. Any man. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Finish it. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Keep reading. Skip down to verse 14. Excuse me. Read that. I am the good shepherd. Uh-huh. 
and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Keep reading. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I lay down my life for the sheep. We read that early in a few spots, right? That's right. Keep reading 16. And other sheep I have. And other sheep I have. Which are not of this fold. Which are not of this fold. That means they are not of Israel. That's right. Keep reading. Them also I must bring. They, he must bring? Must. He said them also I must bring. Keep reading. And they shall hear my voice. That's right. And there shall be one fold. One fold. And one shepherd. And one shepherd. Spiritual Israel. That's right. One fold and one shepherd. Romans chapter 9. I ask you to hold your spot there. Romans chapter 9. Thou have others that I must bring. That was one of them words. Others. Can't get around others. Nope. Whomsoever the earth, the world, Romans chapter 9. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. We getting some understanding today? Yes, sir. Praise God. Romans chapter 9. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. I say the truth in Christ. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. I lie not. Keep reading. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Keep reading. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, mm -hmm. my kinsmen according to the flesh. Paul said, I, I, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Keep reading. Who are Israelites. Who are Israelites. Keep reading. To whom pertaineth the adoption. That's right. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenant. And the giving of the law. Uh huh. And the service of God and the promises. He say, Who are Israelites whom pertaineth the adoption? Skip down to verse six. Keep reading. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. Keep reading. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. That's right. What does Paul mean by that? We got to find out what Paul means by that, right? Yes, sir. Because we said all Israel, uh, all Israel going to be saved. The Lord said he's going to bring others into this fold, which are not of the physical Israel. That's right. What does Paul mean for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel? Because we're dealing with all Israel shall be saved. Let's go take a look at our Lord and Savior, what he has to say about this. Matthew chapter 12. We're just walking it down. Matthew chapter 12. At this time, the Lord is just talking to the people. We're going to pick it up at verse 46. Matthew chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 46. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Just waiting on a few pages. All right. Let's go ahead and read it, my brother. Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. Read it. While he yet talked to the people, uh -huh. behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. So while Jesus talking to the people, his mother and his brethren, they stood without... They want to speak to him. Keep reading. Then one said unto him, Uh huh. Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. Keep reading. But he answered and said unto him that told him. But he answered and said unto them that told him. What did he say, brother? Who is my mother? Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And who are my brethren? That's a powerful question coming from the Lord. Who is my brother? Who is my brethren? You should be asking yourself that. Who is my brother? Who's really my brother? Is it my physical brother that I grew up with, that was stealing and I was doing all this crazy stuff with? Mm. Huh? That I was sleeping around and doing all of this wickedness with? Is that my brother now that I done came into the truth? Is that my sister? Think about it. Who is my mother and who are my brethren? Skip down to verse 50 and read that. What Jesus say? 
For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Keep reading. The same is my brother and sister and mother. That's your brother. That's your sister. That's right. And that's your mother. Whoever is doing the will of the Father, keeping his commandments, walking in the way, not talking about your brother or sister behind their back, mm. not eating no pig no more, keeping the Sabbath, huh? getting wise counsel, stop getting that worldly counsel out there, living after the book. That's right. That's your brother. That's your sister. If somebody's still being nasty, Either you're Christ-like or you Satan-like. Mm. It ain't no in-between. No, sir. Either you're going to toe the line or you're going to get left behind. I didn't say, hey. Hey, I like that. I'm going to do it. <laughs> read, like that, it. La read that one more time, my brother. Verse 50. Verse 50. Read it one more time so it's set in. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven. The same is my brother and sister and mother. This is why we all have to have the mindset of becoming spiritually Israel. See, you can be physically Israel all day long, but if you're not doing the will of the Father, what does it profit you? Matthew chapter 8, flip right on back to Matthew Chapter 8. If you're not doing the will of the Father, what does it profit? If you're being disobedient, you're not living after this word, what is it going to profit you in the end to be physically Israel? Nothing. Matthew chapter 8. We're going to pick it up at verse 11. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And I say unto you. And I say unto you. That many shall come from the east and the west and, sh and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. He said, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about those others which are not in his fold. That's what we're talking about here. Read verse 12, brother. But the children of the kingdom. But the children of the kingdom. Shall be cast out. Into shall be cast out. Keep reading. Into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because we know better. Mm -hmm. We know better. We read earlier that the promises, the covenants, the giving of the law, all of those things were given to who? Israel. Israel. So we know better. That's right. Stop trying to get everybody else out of the kingdom. You better start inviting them in. That's right. This thing better start looking like salt and pepper up in here. <laughs> huh? For real. Stop playing with yourself. Read the book. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is scary. It's, it's, it's terrifying. Scary because you know better. You know better. Either you're going to be Christ-like or you're going to be what? Satan-like. Satan -like. It's on you. Isaiah 56. Mm. The Lord is looking to bring all who obeys his word into his fold. Y'all better start loving on your brother and sister. Who the ones who are obeying his word, whoever they are. You better start hugging on them. <laughs> better start inviting them in. Stop walking by them. You see him at the grocery store, you better stop. That's right. Hey, brother, sister, let me invite you to church. Mm -hmm. Come get some of this good news. <clears throat> stop going straight to Israel. 
The Lord done, ain't he? The Lord done moved from that. He gave that directive to the apostles at one point. They wasn't ready. But we got this word. We reading about all of that. You, if you ain't ready right now, you better get ready. That's right. This thing should be full with all nations of people. That's right. Amen to that. <clears throat> Isaiah 56, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 56, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come. Y'all better remember that. The salvation of the Lord is near to come. Stop playing around. Finish that, my brother. And my righteousness to be revealed. Keep reading. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the Israelite. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Keep reading. That doeth this. That's right. And the son of man that layeth hold on to it. Keep reading. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Keep reading. Neither let the son of the stranger. Neither let the son of the stranger. That hath joined himself to the Lord. That is doing the will of the father. Keep reading. Speak saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. The Lord ain't separated anybody else from his people. No. Why we think like that? Stop thinking like that. Small minded. Why in the world? Would the Lord create all of these nations of people just to throw the, everybody else in the lake of fire? Does that make sense to anybody in here? Absolutely none. Read three again, brother. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Skip down to verse six and continue. Also the sons of the stranger. That also the sons of the stranger. That join themselves to the Lord. That join themselves to the Lord. Keep read. To serve him. Uh-huh. And to love the, the name of the Lord. Keep read. To be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. And taketh hold of my covenant. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. And taketh hold of my covenant. Keep read. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Even them I'm going to bring to my holy mountain. Keep reading. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Keep reading. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted they upon. They ain't going to be accepted. Yes, they will. They're not going to be accepted, brother son. Sacrifices shall be accepted. Because we better than everybody, right? Yes, right. We better than everybody. Physical Israel, we better than everybody. That's what they say. Wait, there ain't nobody else got no shot. Forget about it. That's what they try to say. <laughs> huh? Salvation is only for Israel. All Israel shall be saved, right? Amen. Even them will I bring to my holy mount yes. and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Praise their God. burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Keep reading. Finish that. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. How you get around that? You can't. How do you get around that? You cannot. For my house of prayer shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Verse 8. Read that, brother. Can't leave it out. No, sir. The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith. The saith, Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith. Keep reading. Yet will I gather others to him. Still. Will I gather others to him, keep reading, beside those that are gathered unto him? Besides those that are gathered unto him. How can you get around that? You can't. You can't get around all and others. That's right. Those are absolute. I'm so all and others, whomsoever will, the world, the earth, you cannot get around it. No How do you build a doctrine like that? How do you build a doctrine around that falsehood. Hatred. Either you Christ-like or you Satan-like. 
The next time you see them brothers or them sisters, you better stand boldly in the word of God. Stand boldly on the word of God and say, brother, sister, get yourself together. That's a lie, and your mouth must be what? Stopped. Acts chapter 17. You teach that, brother. Acts 17. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Acts chapter 17. We're going to pick it up at verse 24. Acts chapter 17. We're going to pick it up at verse 24. Still here, just a few pages. Go ahead and read it, my brother. God that made the world and all things therein. God that made the world and all things therein, all the nations therein, all the animals therein, all the trees and everything else therein. Keep reading. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. That's right. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Keep reading. Neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything. The Lord don't need us. The Lord can scrap this world right now and start over if he wanted to. He don't need us. We need him. And you better start acting like we need him. <laughs> Stop playing around with yourself. Exactly. The Lord don't need anything from us. Beg for mercy. Amen. Beg for mercy. Yes, sir. You should be thinking, trying to get everybody in here to this truth. What are you doing? Mm. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Keep reading. Seeing he giveth to all life. That's right. And, Keep reading. And breath. And breath. And all things. And all things. Keep reading. And hath made of one blood all nations of men. No, brother, I got blue blood. You got orange and red and everybody else got a different color of blood, brother. We the same. Huh? One he blood. said and made of one blood. All nations of men. Yes, sir. Keep reading. To dwell on all the face of the earth. Keep reading. And have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Keep reading. That they should seek the Lord. That they should seek the Lord. All nations which are made out of one blood. Keep reading. If haply they might feel, they may feel after him. Uh-huh. And find him. And find him. Though he be not far from every one of us. What? Mm. He not far from every one of us? No, sir. Not just Israel? No, sir. He said he not far from every one of us. If you seek him, if you do his will, highlight it, star it, <laughs> put it in your Bible. We're one blood. When you're walking by that brother or that sister that don't look like you, if that brother say, I believe in Jesus, I keep his commandments, you better dap that brother up so fast, that <laughs> sister up so fast. Well, brother, well, praise God. Praise in God. Jesus' name, yes, I just sir. gained another brother. Amen. I just gained another sister. Yes. Because we on the same pathway. Yes. Make it plain. Make it plain, Justin. That's right. But that brother that you grew up with, little John John, Huh? Little Buki? That you still trying to hang out with? And he doing all sorts of mess. No. She doing all sorts of mess. Your sister, boy, they committing to doing all sorts of mess. You think that's your sister? Mm. <clears throat> you think that's your brother? Where we at, brother? 27. Skip down to verse 31 and read it. Because he hath appointed a day. Because he hath appointed a day. In the which he will judge the world. No, and brother, he's just going to judge the other nations. He said the world. Because all Israel is going to be saved. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in what? In righteousness. In righteousness. By that, a man whom he hath ordained. By that man whom he hath ordained. Can you read? Whereof he hath given assurance 
unto all men. No, brother, we keep reading that. All men. He didn't give assurance to all men, did he? That's what he says. Keep reading. In that he hath raised him from the dead. That's right. So why is Jesus going to judge the world if, if, if Israel is the only nation that has a shot into making it? It make no sense. Why are you going to judge the world then? He might well just say, you know what, Israel, y'all good. We're here the rest of the body and we're going to throw y'all up in that thing. <laughs> Boom. It's over with. We good. No. <laughs> Small minded. Small minded. No need for a judgment. Because I'm just going to throw y'all, all the other nations in the lake. Hmm. First Timothy chapter 2. Mouths must be stopped. First Timothy chapter 2. We want a new building. We want a new church house. What are we going to do? Huh? We better get on our job. We better start spreading this word to everybody and anybody who want to receive it. First Timothy chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. First Timothy chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. I exhort, therefore... That first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Why is he saying that? Driving a point. He said, I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Yes, sir. Keep reading. For kings. For kings. And for all that are in authority. Uh-huh. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Amen. Keep reading. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. No, no. That ain't good that you pray for all men and kings and everybody in authority, that we may live a peaceable life. You're supposed to be praying for Israel, brother, mm. sister. Pray only for physical Israel. Don't pray for everybody. Why is he saying that? Hmm. Why did God say this? For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. You better check yourself. Read verse 4, brother. Who will have all men to be saved? Who will have all men to be saved? Keep reading. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. If you read this to one of our Hebrew brothers, they mess around and pass out. <laughs> he say, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Verse 5, brother. For there is one God. For there is one God. And one mediator. And one mediator. Keep reading. Between God and men. That's right. Keep reading. The man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus. Read verse 6. Who gave himself a ransom for all. Who gave himself a ransom for all. Keep reading. To be testified in due time. Amen. In Jesus name. And in the end the Lord will be king over all nations. Zechariah chapter 14. We winding down. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Zechariah chapter 14. Who gave himself a ransom for all. Zechariah 14. We're going to read one verse here. Verse 9. Zechariah 14. We're going to read one verse here. Verse 9. Nine. We are winding down. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Amen. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Let's go see. 
at what our king has done and he, what he will do. Let's go over to Revelation chapter 5. We're just winding down now. I pray to God that the point has been laid across. Revelation chapter 14, excuse me, Revelation chapter 5. Let's go see what our Lord has done and what he will do. Revelation 5, we're going to pick it up at verse 9. We are winding on down. Jesus, the king over all the earth. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book uh -huh. and to open the seals thereof. Keep reading. For thou wast slain. For thou wast slain for the sins of what? The whole of world. Who? Of the whole world. For That's thou right. wast slain. Keep reading. And has redeemed us to God uh -huh. by thy blood. By out thy of, blood. Keep reading. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue, and people, and nation, keep reading, and has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And we shall reign on the earth. Everybody that does the will of the Father out of every kindred, and nation, and tongue, and people, out of every nation of people. Revelation 15. We winding down, y'all. Revelation 15. We're going to pick it up at verse 3 here. Revelation chapter 15. We're going to pick it up at verse 3. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, uh -huh. and the song of the Lamb, saying, Keep reading. Great and marvelous are thy works. Great and marvelous are thy works. Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Just and true are thy ways. Thou King of saints. Thou King of saints. And who are the saints? Those that keep the commandments of God and the and faith, the faith, faith of Jesus. in Jesus. That's right. Read verse 4, brother. Who shall not fear thee? Who shall not fear thee? O Lord. Uh huh. And glorify thy name. Amen. Keep read. For thou only art holy. For thou only art holy. For all nations. For all nations. Shall come and worship before shall thee. Shall come and worship before thee. Keep reading. Finish that. For thy judgments are made manifest. For thy judgments are made known. Mm -hmm. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. They are made known unto the people, unto all nations. Revelation chapter 10, uh, chapter 7, excuse me. Jesus, the king over all nations. We're winding down. We have two more after this. Revelation chapter 7. We're going to pick it up at verse 9. Jesus, the king over all nations nations. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, uh -huh. of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. He said, after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Keep reading. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Skip down to verse 13 and read it. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? What are these which are arrayed in white robes, brother? Read it. And whence came they? And where they come from? Keep reading. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. You know it. Keep reading. And he said to me, These are they which come out of, a, of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You mean to tell me that if you want to serve God, whoever you are, 
and you make it through that crazy great tribulation because it's going to be a time that this world has never seen before that you can wash your robe clean? He said, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, Finish sir. that 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God uh -huh. and serve him day and night. And in they his, serve him day and night. Keep reading. In his temple. Keep reading. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And he going to dwell among them? Right. Ephesians chapter 4. Whosoever will, all people, yes. others, the world, the whole earth, you can't get around it. Ephesians chapter 4. You have one more after this. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to pick it up at verse 4. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 4. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. There is one body. There is one body. And one spirit. And one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope. One hope. Of your calling. Of your calling. Keep reading. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. Keep reading. One God and Father of all. One God and Father of all. Keep reading. Who is above all. Who is above all. And through all. And through all. And you all. And in you all. One God. One spirit. One faith. One baptism. Whosoever will. Come into the house of God. That's right. Because this is a house of prayer for all people. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Can't get around it. And don't let nothing or no one tell you any different. And we're not going to let nothing or nobody separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's right. Romans chapter 8. This is our last scripture. And I'll let you out of here. Romans chapter 8. We're going to pick it up at verse 18. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Y'all remember that. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Remember that when you're going through it. Remember that when you're on your last leg. This word is the only thing that's going to sustain you. Amen. Skip down to verse 35 and read it. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who are you going to let separate you from the love of Christ? Who? What? Keep reading. Shall tribulation? Shall tribulation? Or distress? Or distress? Or persecution? Or persecution? Or famine? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or peril? Or sword? Or sword? Keep reading. As it is written. As it is written. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Keep reading. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're more than conquerors. Keep reading. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded. Are you persuaded? Yes, sir. Are you persuaded? For I am persuaded, keep read, that neither death, that neither death, nor life, nor life, nor angels, nor angels, nor principalities, nor principalities, nor powers, nor powers, nor things present, nor things present, nor things to come, nor things to come, nor height, nor height, nor depth, nor depth, nor any other creature, nor any other creature, keep read, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And with Amen. that, y'all, I thank you for your Praise time. God.